Good morning, everybody. We're going to get started a little early. Is that okay? All right, good. Uh, today, we're kicking off Pothole Palooza. And for the next 30 days, uh, DDOT will be busy uh, catching up from winter uh, and from what winter and salt and all of our efforts to keep the, the streets clear of snow and ice due to our roads. Uh, and we will be uh, filling potholes all over the city uh, and doing it even faster than usual within 48 hours of when uh, the potholes are reported. Uh, so Director Mar Marudian assures me uh, that his street and maintenance team is ready. Uh, our customer service teams are ready as well, uh, along with our social media teams who will be helping to follow our progress. Uh, and now we uh, also rely on our residents to help us identify where potholes are that need to be fixed uh, and also making sure that they are using all the means necessary to do that by calling 311, going to 311.dc.gov, or using the 311 app. Uh, they may also tweet at us at 311dc.gov or at d D dot DC uh, using the hot hashtag pothole palooza. Uh, we're also today, and uh, we're going to have Jeff talk a little bit more about it, going to tell you about two more important projects. Uh, you have heard me in my discussions about my two most recent budgets uh, talk about how we are increasing the district's investment uh, in ridding our city of roads that have a poor rating. Uh, and we're especially concentrating on our residential streets. The truth truth is our main roads are in pretty good shape uh, and we estimate, however, that about 25% of our local roads or the residential streets uh, have a poor rating. So we have uh, planned and funded in this budget a way to eliminate uh, poor quality roads in the district by 2020. It starts in 2018, and we call this new plan DC, or I should say, we call it PAVE DC. The plan is aggressive. Uh, it includes four priority areas, uh, road rehabilitation, road maintenance, alley repair and reconstruction, and sidewalk reconstruction. Uh, so we are on our way to sustain consistent funding, uh, great leadership at DDOT, uh, and great execution by our DDOT teams for PAVE DC. The last thing I want to mention uh, is that we're here on 14th Street for a reason. Uh, we are celebrating the start of the 14th Street Northwest Streetscape. The Streetscape project will stretch from Thomas Circle to Florida Avenue, one of the busiest corridors in Washington, D.C., for pedestrians, cyclists, buses, and vehicles. This corridor carries 23,000 vehicles a day, 175 bicycles per hour, uh, and it is a very popular corridor for buses as well. Uh, it carries the 52, the 53, and the 54, carrying more than 13,000 daily riders. So with this project, we're going to improve the route for all who use it um, by enhancing accessibility, making it safer for pedestrian and bicyclists, and making it more beautiful. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn to Jeff Marudian to say a bit more on behalf of DDOT. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for your leadership. Uh, I want to thank everybody here, the members of the community, our great DDOT team, uh, for everybody's engagement along the way. I am especially pleased to be here at the site of the 14th Street Northwest Streetscape to launch Pothole Palooza and to introduce PAVE DC. As the mayor said, this streetscape project stretches along 14th Street from Thomas Circle to Florida Avenue and is expected to be completed next spring of 2019. Due to the sheer volume of vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists, you can see why this corridor is prime for these type of streetscape improvements. The improvements include brand new sidewalks that are ADA compliant, new reconstructed roadway, additional trees, the addition of new landscaping, benches, new 
LED streetlights, new multi-space parking meters, and many more features. I am particularly excited about the 15 new bus boarding islands. These islands allow buses to board passengers and for cyclists to safely travel around them. This will deliver another important safety feature of our Vision Zero strategy. As you know, and as the mayor said, the month of April is Pothole Palooza Month. This is when we encourage residents and visitors to call us and call 311 and to tweet at us to let us know that there are potholes on the roadways and to let us know where they are. We are committed to repairing those potholes within 48 hours as a part of this program. That's our pledge and our crews are ready to go. Today, as the mayor said, we are making yet another commitment. Under the mayor's leadership, we are going to eliminate all local roads that are in poor condition by the year 2024. That deserves some applause. <laughs> the frustration over our city's roads is real. We know that filling potholes is a great step, but preventing them is even better. And PAVE DC represents Mayor Bowser's commitment to doing just that. We have spent the past several months assessing the condition of all of our assets across the city. So we know where the problem areas are, and we are going to get to every road, alley, and sidewalk through this effort. The public will be able to monitor our progress through a new website. That address is d.dc.gov slash pavedc. And I want to especially thank the team who has helped us put this effort together and to the men and women who are going to be out doing this work. We look forward to working with com communities across all eight wards of the city to improve our transportation system. And we need everyone's help. We will continue to rely on our residents to report problem areas when they see them. And DDOT will continue to share our progress every day. As I told the mayor earlier, DDOT is ready. Thank you. Okay, so we will take a few questions and then we'll walk up to 14th in Rhode Island uh, and DDOT will demonstrate uh, how it's going to get this work done. Yes, Mark. Are you prioritizing or can you tell us where you'll begin the paved DC effort where people will first see the new roads go in? Sure. So um, DDOT evaluates and has been evaluating as part of our budget process. And we're um, in many ways above a, a lot of jurisdictions where they are in being able to determine the condition of all of our assets, including the roads. Uh, so what they will do is look at those ratings, look at how they can plan and execute the work. Uh, and the, the idea is to get to the worst of the worst and get that moving. That's not to say, while we have a focus in PAVE DC on the local roads, uh, there, will all, there will continue to be work on, um, in, on schedule for all of our roads. Can you tell us which, which are the worst of the worst, where you're going to start? We will be able to, and we're going to be in all eight wards. Yes. I, I'm off topic. Okay. Uh, there was a protest outside of City Hall yesterday where people complaining about the death with dignity law, which you, you signed into law, but they complained that the D.C. Department of Health has implemented regulations that make it onerous and that so f one of those is requiring doctors and patients to register before doctors can issue the prescription and before patients can avail themselves of the prescription. And so far, according to advocates, no doctors or patients have registered. Are you concerned about this, and what are, you, what are you doing to make this opportunity more available to, to people who actually need it, who are, who, who are dying and want to avail themselves of this law that you, that you signed into law? Well, we always contemplated that we would know what doctors are participating and that they are, are participating in a way um, that is protective of public health and public safety. So I don't think saying um, that we're going to have a registration regime is at all onerous. But what I want to understand from the advocates who had a press conference yesterday uh, is where they have encountered problems. Uh, we will make our deputy mayor available uh, to understand where their problems are. Uh, we want a system that is predictable uh, and understandable um, that all doctors and patients can avail themselves of um, if, if they so choose. So 
how are you going to make it available that patients can find a doctor who would, who would, who would or two doctors? Well, Mark, the doctors have to, are not required to participate, as you know. Um, and so we will, what our job will be is to educate the public, the medical community, of what the processes are. Uh, and if they choose to participate, um, they, they can. And, and I don't think that anybody should judge the success of our program in, in kind of raw numbers. Uh, the, 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 the point of the program um, is to have a predictable system uh, where participating doctors would know what they need to do to um, comply with the city's regulations and patients would know um, where to go. Any other questions? Okay, 14th in Rhode Island.